One day during the Loch Ness Summer Fair, there was to be a monster look-alike competition. The McToot children were very excited. Knowing what we know should get us fast fries easily, Angus. We'll be the talk of the... Oh, no! Stop! You've ruined our chances of winning the contest, Morosia's Nurse. We can never make another model in time. I'm sorry, Elspeth. Well, let me be your monster. I can sit on this floor. If he could really sit still, Angus, we could win the competition easily. We could get away with it, but you've got to promise to behave yourself, ferociousness. I will, I will, I promise. Well, we'll soon find out. Here comes Father with Farmer McSpreading's tractor. Shh. Good grief, children. You have been busy. <laughs> That's a very funny-looking monster you've built there. Did you hear thunder then, children? At the fete in the square, the mayor and mayoress were getting ready to judge a Loch Ness Monster look-alike contest. We'll start the parade. We'll let the contest begin. Oh, look, dear. Isn't that a splendid model? It's so realistic. Oh, very clever. It looks most ferocious. Oh, dear. I don't like the look of this one. It looks nothing like a Loch Ness Monster to me. Did you hear thunder just then, dear? I hope it's not going to rain. Sergeant McFuzz gather all the contestants and their splendid models together for the prize giving. Leave it to me, Your Worship. Come on, you lot. Get into a single line. The mayor is going to give out the prizes. We will give the prizes out in the reverse order. The third prize goes to the McToot float for a nice try. Third prize? That's ridiculous. As my lady wife says, a Loch Ness monster should look more like a long green worm. There goes that thunder again, dear. Come on, children. We've done very well getting third prize. A job well done. But it's not fair. Stuff and nonsense, children. You're never satisfied. Well, that's the contest over, dear. Now perhaps you'd like to open the fairground. Leave it to me, dearest. I'll personally take the first ride on the big wheel. Can I go now, Angus? Yes, all right, ferociousness. Quick, there's no one about. Dive back into the lock. Bye, then. Thanks for everything, ferociousness. You were marvellous. A monster! I can see a Loch Ness monster! And it's waving at me! Help! Help! Get me down! Oh, something's wrong, Sergeant McFuzz. You better go and investigate. I saw the Loch Ness monster. It dove into the loch. Oh, steady on, dear. The air's pretty thin up there. Plays funny tricks with the mind, you know. No sign of any monster, Your Worship. A few ducks, a pigeon or two, the occasional seagull. I tell you, I saw a monster! It was the one that came third in the lookalike contest. It waved at me. The one that came third? That big green thing, all teeth and brown <laughs> spots? Yes! <laughs> Come along, children. I'll buy you all a candy floss. I think our Lady Meris has been at the wine gums again. Oh, this monster indeed. And the one that came third at that. <laughs> <laughs> you can knock it, you can rock it, you can go to Timbuktu, but you'll never find a messy in the zoo. You may see an anaconda, a giraffe, and kangaroo, but you'll never Watch those notes go floating across the waves. Ferociousness appears at once. 
Mr. McToot and his children were having a picnic in the shade of an old apple tree. Oh, did you hear that? It sounded like a cannon going off to me. A cannon? I'll not have cannons disturbing the peace and quiet of my lock. Come on, let's go and investigate. It must be a cannon. Look. Something's just landed in the lock. It's terribly dangerous. Look, there it is. Who's firing that contraption into the waters of my lock? Ah, it's you, Mr. McToot. Wouldn't talk. Professor Dunkoff, we might have known it would be you. I'm uh, testing my latest invention to tell the world the whereabouts of the Loch Ness Monster. Not without my permission, you nut. Ah, oh, such a pity. For as you can see, I have named this machine after you, Mr. McToot. The cunning old devil. Uh, well, uh, maybe we can uh, discuss this matter uh, man to man, so to speak. And don't listen to him, Father. Look, if you study this plan that I have worked out in my bathtub, the McToot missile with me inside will be fired like a bullet from this cannon. Then I will steer it underwater along the bottom of the lock, photographing the monster in its natural habitat. Yeah? No underwater explosions or anything like that, mind. Not a peep, nor a squeak, <laughs> I assure you, my friend. <laughs> We'd better run the Nessies, Angus. Come on, let's go and call them. The children blew hard on their secret thistle whistles. <whistles> and ferociousness appeared. Not so loud. I've a terrible headache. A huge great iron ball hit me on the head. It's Professor Dunkoff. Aye, he's got this enormous cannon, and he's going to fire a huge missile into the lock and photograph the Nessies. Oh, dear. Here comes Her Highness. She'll know how to deal with it. A cannon, you said, children. Nasty things, cannons. But what can we do to stop him? Oh, don't you worry, my dear. I have a plan. You two go back to the professor's contraption and wait for my call. Ah, oh, there you are, children. Just in time to see your father assist me in the historical maiden flight of the McToot missile. Oh, Angus, I do wish Her Highness would hurry up. Mr. McToot, when I make this sign, so you will light the fuse, yeah? Understood? Psst. Quick, tie this rope round the wheel of the cannon. Don't let them see you. Stand by to heave, ferociousness. Heave away. Well, that'll teach him for hitting me on the head. Are you ready yet, yeah, Professor? This thing's beginning to burn my fingers. <laughs> Mr. McToad, why is the cannon falling like this? Ah, at last, a signal. Nein! Mr. McToot! Nein! Ah! Mein goose is truly cooked! Ah! Ah! I thought he said that that contraption went under the water. The man's potty. Himmel! I'm running out of luck! Oh, it's Inverness! In the park at Inverness, the mayor was planting a commemorative tree. Would you say that we've made that hole large enough for the tree? I mean this tree. What are you doing in my hole? This is a very strange custom. I must be in a foreign country. But to think that man named that silly contraption after me, the sooner he gives up this monster hunting business, the better it'll be for all of us. We couldn't agree more, Father. <laughs> Thank you. 
one hot, still summer's day, not a leaf was stirring. Listen, what's that whistling sound? Uh, is that the wind in the trees? Oh, it's definitely the wind in the trees, Father. It sounds more like a thistle whistle to me. How could it be, Angus? We're not blowing our secret thistle whistles. It must be a Nessie. Come on, Elspeth. They might be in trouble. Let's go and find out. Look, it's forgetfulness. He looks terribly worried. Was that you blowing your thistle whistle forgetfulness? I think so. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, have you seen Babyness? He's gone missing. Uh, I didn't forget that. Babyness missing? Where did you lose him? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh. But he was here a moment ago, I think. Your hopeless forgetfulness. Leave it to us. We'll look for him. Look, Angus. Sporran has caught a scent. Perhaps it's babyness. Go on, Sporran. We'll follow you. Come on, Elspeth. He's hot on the trail. Look, there's Mrs. McToffy heading this way. Hello, children. I hope you're not expecting to buy any sweeties this morning. My sweet shop is closed. I've been invited to the unveiling of the mayor's statue. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. McToffy. We were only taking our dog Sporin for a walk. Look, Angus, he's run round to the back of the sweet shop. The back door's open. Come on out of there, Sporin. You'll get us into trouble. Angus peered nervously into the sweet shop, only to be confronted with a shocking sight. It's babyness. Oh, Angus, just look at the mess. Mrs. McToffy will be furious. Shh, I can hear voices. Quick, tidy up the shop. I'll close the back door. We can leave the mare statue here for ten minutes while we go and get a cup of tea. Quick, Elspeth, get Babyness cleaned up. I've got an idea. Come on, Babyness. Don't be awkward. <sighs> We've got to get you back in the lock before someone sees you. Push. Push hard, Elspeth. Hide him under the cover. Oh, oh. Oh, Angus, the workmen are coming back. Back into the shop while I cover him up. Hurry! So the statue seems to have got heavier since we had that. That's the last time I drink tea at that cafe. I'm pooped. <laughs> What's that goo goo noise? Well, I don't know. It's coming from the back of the statue. I'll take a look. Go, go, go. Ah, it's a monster, a huge baby monster. Move for your life. Oh, dear. Come on, Elspeth. Baby Ness has been spotted and he's on the move again. Look, Angus, he's unveiled the mayor's statue. He's with forgetfulness at last. That's the most important thing. Now, see you don't lose him again. He nearly got us all into serious trouble. Oh, Angus, he's only a baby. What's his name, forgetfulness? His name, uh, I've, I've, I've forgotten. Sorry, Elspeth. It's not fair. I'm the mayor, so I'm supposed to unveil my own statue. It's just not fair. Quite right, too, Your Worship. Unforgivable, quite unforgivable. Who on earth would do such a thing? I know who did it, Your Worship. It was a baby Loch Ness monster. He took the cover off the statue and then ran back into the loch. Honestly, such people shouldn't be allowed on the streets unescorted. Did you hear that? A baby Loch Ness monster, that's what he said. And he said it unveiled his worship's statue in the square. Next thing he'll say is that it had a dummy in its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you can knock it, you can rock it, you can go to Timbuktu, but you'll never find a Nessie in the zoo. You may see an anaconda, a giraffe and kangaroo, but you'll never see a Nessie in the zoo. Watch those notes go floating across the waves. Ferociousness appears at once and grabs a note or two for lunch. And the whole of the family nest is not too far behind. Sporty death leaps over him, turns upside down, then dives back in. And the beautiful loveliness shows she's the kiss in time. My witness comes up for him and taking notes without a care. Returns with a crunch and a bunch and a splash to the family.
One fine day, Angus and Elspeth were out walking their dog. What's that? It's solid. Look, Angus, it's moving. Hello, children. <laughs> didn't you see me sitting here? No, of course we didn't. You look like a cub of grass. Oh, that. I always disguise myself when I'm on land. Do you mean you can change colour? Yes, of course. Any colour I like. Well, no. Uh, Almost any colour. Can you disguise yourself against this brick wall, ferociousness? Easy. Stand back. All I have to do is stand in front of it and... <laughs> Change! Good grief, he's done it. He's almost vanished out of sight. What's that noise? It's a fire engine. It's been pumping water out of the loch all morning. Where are the firemen? Up on top of the hill. They mustn't see me. That's why I'm disguising myself. Tell you what, ferociousness. Can you change to fire engine red? Of course I can. Watch. Oh, this. Fantastic. What a colour. It's so bright. Quick, change back before the whole village sees you. Hurry. Aye. Oh, 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 oh dear. What's oh. the matter? Oh, uh, I'm stuck. I can't change back. Oh, dear. Hurry, oh. hurry. There's a fireman coming. Oh. Run for it, Elspeth. Hi. Oh, oh dear. What's that groaning noise? There. Oh, it's a big red monster. Chief, chief. It's a big red monster. Oh, oh, dear. You see me. I must hide. Over here, ferociousness. Quick, quick. What are you going to do? You can't stay that colour forever. What can we do to help ferociousness? You must give me a fright. That usually does it. You mean like this? <laughs> no, that's no good. I mean creepy crawly fright. I can't stand creepy crawly things. Come on, Elspeth. Let's go and look for something to frighten them with. Oh, look, there's Father coming this way. Hello, children. I'm just off to see Sergeant McFuzz. Uh, will you take my bagpipes back home for me? But, Father, we... Of course we will, Father. Angus, aren't you forgetting poor ferociousness? Aye, and he needs a fright. Bagpipes could be just the thing. He said creepy crawly things, Angus. Bagpipes aren't creepy crawly things. Hey, you two, come over here a moment. Oh, dear. They're going to ask about ferociousness. I'll leave Father's bagpipes here. Angus, whatever do we say? We say we've seen nothing. Oh, dear. I'm still bright red. I must find a way of changing. I must. Ah! I can't stand creepy crawly spider things. There he is. It's a red, green, blue monster. Ah! Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Run for your life, you seen us? I can't walk, Elspeth. Come over here and keep out of the door. Oh, dear. Here comes Father with Sergeant McFuzz. Angus, what are my bagpipes doing here on the ground? It looks as if they've been trodden on. It must have been the big red monster. Blue monster, you mean? Red and blue monsters? Are you all potty? Did you see any red and blue monsters, children? No, Father. <laughs> We did. And what's more, we saw a tartan one. A tartan one, you say? Was it a Campbell or a McGregor tartan monster you saw? <laughs> monsters, indeed. Tartan monsters. <laughs> did you put out a fire in a toy shop? <laughs>
Mr. McToot had to go aboard the ship anchored in the loch to check its cargo. Angus and Elspeth were looking forward to going with him. A cargo ship? How exciting! Aye, she's bound for China with a load of fine Scottish kippers. I wish I was going to China. Oh, look how big the ship is. Aye, it's a good life travelling the high seas. Up the gangplank you go, <laughs> children. Ahoy there, Captain Stanfast. Ahoy yourself, McToot. The cargo is ready for you to check. Uh, as you can see, we have some fine Scottish kippers aboard. Come on, Elspeth. Let's explore the ship. Just look at these dark, deep holes, Angus. You could store our cottage down there. Look, Elspeth. What's that moving in the darkness? Shh! Quietly now, children. Don't give me away. Your Highness, what are you doing aboard this ship? Stowing away, my dear. I'm going to see my cousin in China. It's time I paid her a visit. But what will you live on? Kipples, my dear. As you can see, the finest. Uh, but uh, I've forgotten my handbag. Could you get it for me? Look out! It's the captain. He's looking this way. Hey, you two kids. Keep away from that old. It's dangerous. Uh, sorry, captain. Uh, we were just looking. Your father's got a job of work to do, so uh, try and behave yourselves. Come on, Angus. We've got to figure a way of getting her highness's handbag. You keep an eye out for the captain while I blow my thistle whistle. Angus blew hard on his thistle whistle and silliness appeared. Quick, silliness! Get her highness's handbag for her. Don't miss a bow. There's no time to lose. Angus, the captain's coming. Get ready to go, shot children. We're about to weigh the anchor. But what about her highness's handbag? Look, there's mightiness. Hey, Mightiness, sit on the anchor and stop it coming up. We must give Silliness more time to find the handbag. Either way, my hearties. Let's up anchor on the way to China. There's something wrong with the winch, Captain. It won't turn. There can't be anything wrong. It's a new winch. Or is it smoking? It won't budge, Captain. Silliness. Oh, you found the handbag. Quick, hand it up. A hand, Elspeth. Hurry. Oh, there you are, dears. And you've got my handbag. You are clever children. Enjoy your trip, Your Highness. The oops! <laughs> Somebody's rocking the boat. <laughs> I owe you somebody get my seasick pills. Oh, hey, what's that hanging on my anchor? It's a monster, the longest monster. There's a monster sitting on the anchor. Whoa. Abandoned ship. Oh. What's going on, children? He's getting ready for sea, father. <laughs> Well, he's making enough of a commotion about it. Come on, it's time we went ashore. Just look at the captain. That man will have a nervous breakdown before he reaches China. Mark my words. Just you mark my words. Yes, father. <laughs> <laughs>
One cold morning, Angus and Elspeth were going down to the loch to play. See that you children keep your scarves on. I don't want you catching cold. Don't worry, Father. We will. We haven't seen a Nessie all week. Let's blow our thistle whistles and call one. The children blew hard on their thistle whistles. <coughs> but not one Nessie appeared. Nothing. Try again, Angus. <coughs> Where can they be? Oh, Angus, you don't think they've gone forever, do you? Psst. Psst. Oh, look. It's carefulness. We were very worried. We thought you'd left the lock. Don't come too close. Babyness has given us all the measles. Oh, that's all right, carefulness. Elspeth and I've had the measles. You can't catch it twice. Oh, poor babyness. We must buy him a present. Where is he? He's sitting in a darkened cave down there to help him get better. What can we do to help? I know. He loves sticky sweets. Come on, Elspeth. Let's go and get him some. I'll tell him you're coming. That'll cheer him up. Good morning, children. And uh, what can I do for you today? Good morning, Mrs. McToffee. We would like some sweets for a sick friend. How about these? Uh, they're a bit sticky, I'm afraid. Just what he likes. We'll take the whole jar. The whole jar? Oh, honestly, children, if your friend eats all these, his teeth will fall out. Oh, that's no problem. He hasn't got any teeth. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Gosh, this jar is heavy. Cramps. Just look at all those sweets. Come on, Toby, let's follow them. Oh, poor babyness. Look at all those spots. Never mind. Look, we brought some sticky sweets for you. Come on, Toby, we've got them trapped. Yeah! Give us those sweets, or we'll bash you up. <laughs> Get him back into the lock. Come on, baby Ness, move yourself. Oh, do hurry, baby Ness. He's gone. Phew, at least he's safe. Come on, Elspeth. Honestly, Dad, there is a spotty monster. Stab action. Leave it to your dad. I'll handle this. Be careful, dad. It's awful fierce. Oh, all I can see is a large empty jar that once contained sticky sweets. The monster must have eaten them, dad. Are you making fun of your uniformed father, son? Ow! Dad! Ow! That hurts, dad! Straight to bed without your tea, that's where you're going, my lad. Straight to bed. Spotty baby monsters, indeed. I'll give you spotty monsters. Sticky sweets. Sticky sweets. Pump up.
One winter morning, Elspeth and Angus had a surprise when they looked out of their window. Oh, Angus, look! It's snowing! Come on, let's go out to play. I wonder what the nurses are doing. Let's go and call them and give them a surprise. I know you, Angus. You're going to throw snowballs at ferociousness, aren't you? The children blew hard on their special thistle whistles. But no one appeared. So, they blew again. Look! Look, the lock is frozen solid! And who's that beneath the ice? It's ferociousness! Oh dear, he's trapped! Come on, Elspeth, we must get help. Don't worry, ferociousness, we'll get you out somehow. Oh dear, who can we get to help? Look, it's Professor Dunkoff. What's he doing down here? Up to no good, I'll be bound. Hello, children. Have you come to see my latest invention? The amazing Dunkopf listening device? <laughs> no. We're trying to find someone to help get Ferro... Shh, Angus. Uh, uh, we're trying to find someone to cut a hole in the ice. Do not worry, children. My assistant is about to do just that with his chainsaw. Then he will lower a microphone and we will listen to the voices of the Loch Ness Monster from the bottom of the loch. Oh, a monster! Skate for your life! Oh, I'm coming to get you. Whoops. Oh. 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 I'm sliding. Oh. Oh. What is the great green mound sliding towards oh. me? Oh. Oh. This is my assistant. Oh, Angus, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Oh dear, look at ferociousness, sitting on the ice for all the world to see. Ferociousness, you can't sit there. Someone will see you. Hide yourself, do something. Oops, I think the ice is breaking. Oh dear. Bye, Elspeth. Bye, Agnes. Quick, man, get your feet. I think I saw a monster just before the... It was a monster, Professor. It chased me across the ice. Aha! A hole in the ice. Quick, drop down the microphone into the water. I'll switch on my listening device. <laughs> big pipes, Professor. I hear big pipes. It sounds like father. Nonsense. It's coming from my listening device. <laughs> it is father. Hello, children. Uh, What's this weird thing by the side of my loch? <laughs> they thought they heard bagpipes coming from the bottom of the loch, Father. How could they hear bagpipes with snow in their ears? <laughs> it's snow laughing matter. Snow laughing matter. What did he mean?
One cold winter's day, a curling championship was taking place on the frozen loch. Hello there, McTavish. Uh, has the opposition arrived yet? Aye, they're waiting for their star player, Hector McBrawn, to arrive. If you're going to act as my sweeper, Angus, stand by with your broom. I'm about to make a delivery. <laughs> Just look at the size of the opposition, man. Have you ever seen such muscles? I'm a cheat. It's big for sure. <laughs> Follow that, McCheat. If you can. <laughs> chance of winning. He needs help. Then let's call the Nessies. The children blew hard on their thistle whistles. And cleverness appeared. Hello, children. What can I do for you today? Oh, thank goodness it's you, cleverness. Father needs help. He doesn't stand a chance against the mighty Hector McBrawn. Leave it to me, children. Uh, uh, let me see now. Um, uh, a curling rink is uh, 46 yards long. Uh, that's um, 42.06 meters, yes. Uh, now divide that by... Um, uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, that should do nicely. We must get back to the contest before we're missed. Come on, mightiness, and you, heaviness. Uh, <laughs> Over to the far side of the lock. <laughs> I'll tell you my plan as we go. Ah, there you are, children. You've arrived at a crucial moment in the competition. Will you go first, or shall I, my toot? No, brawn before brains. I want to see what I have to do to win. You'll have to beat... Uh, lift the ice. Uh, easy now, so that the stone slows down to a halt. It's sliding backwards out of the circle. What's going on? Is that the best you can do, McBron? <laughs> Stand well back. I don't believe it. Ah, steady, lads. Uh, now, lift. We are the champions. We are the champions. We are the champions. We are the... Oh. Monsters. Loch Ness Monsters. Oops, he's seen us. Oh. Monsters. Monsters indeed. Some people just can't stand being beaten fair and square. Not only has he lost the competition, he's lost his marbles. <laughs> marbles. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> yes, father. <laughs>